cool afternoon. Now at noon, new video release shows a coach kicking and throwing basketball at his players. Details on the Rutgers abuse scandal coming up. Plus, students at one Georgia high school are moving ahead with their first integrated prom. The controversial story in your comments straight ahead. And first we found Nemo and now Dory is lost. More on the Finding Nemo sequel in today's Hollywood Minute. Your news at noon starts right now. Live from Television Park in high definition, the station you count on. This is WJBF News Channel 6 at noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Morrison. And I'm Chris Kane, and thanks for watching News Channel 6 at noon. We'll get to the big story in just a moment, but first, some breaking news to tell you about out of West Augusta. Take a look at this 18-wheeler on its side around the I-20 Bobby Jones area. No word right now on injuries or any gridlock, but if you're headed out for lunch in that area today, drive safely. Coverage you can count on continues with the firing of a major Division I basketball coach. Rutgers coach Mike Rice is out of a job less than 24 hours after his explosive behavior and practices was exposed to the world. Now the video of Rice verbally and physically abusing his players has outraged many people and it ultimately cost him his job. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has today's big story at noon. The outright abuse caught on camera and costing Rutgers University men's basketball coach Mike Rice his job today. <laughs> Rutgers announced late this morning that Rice was fired after ESPN released this video showing him in practice hitting, kicking, hurling basketballs at players' heads. <laughs> and behind the bleeps, screaming obscenities at players, including homophobic slurs during his first three years as coach. The verbal abuse, the belittling. Yeah, I was like in total shock that this guy wasn't fired immediately on the spot. But instead, the team's former director of player development, Eric Murdoch, says he was fired after reporting the abuse last year. Coach Rice was initially suspended for three games, forced to pay a $50,000 fine and to take anger management classes. Rutgers athletic director Tim Pernetti now admits he made a mistake, releasing a statement that reads in part, dismissal and corrective action were debated in December, and I thought it was in the best interest of everyone to rehabilitate, but I was wrong. Rice also admitted his guilt, no sharing an emotional for, for apology. There is no excuse for it. I was wrong. And uh, I want to tell everybody who, who's believed in me that I'm that I'm deeply sorry for, for the pain and, and the hardship that I've caused him. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie released a statement saying he supports the decision to fire Coach Rice and says he is optimistic Rutgers will choose a new head coach who will set a good example. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. I mean, the practice video just leaves you speechless. It says it all, doesn't it? It's unbelievable it? Like something like that can go on mm -hmm. at, a, at a practice. But we asked our Facebook friends what they thought about this incident. Not only did some say Mike Rice should be fired, many of you said he should be punished further. Just uh, wanted to know how this could happen. One of our Facebook friends writes, Becky bonner Marin says he should go to jail for some time to think about his actions. Coach or not, there's no reason acceptable to put your hands on another person. On the other hand, Chris Edderly writes, the assistant that leaked the footage should be fired. What a complete lack of loyalty. America has become soft. People supporting his firing probably believe we shouldn't keep score. And Shelly Farthing says he is a bully. The players should press assault charges against him. And of course, we thank you for all your comments. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, just head to our Facebook page by searching News Channel 6. And be sure to tune in to News Channel 6 Sports at 6 for the latest on this developing story. Also making major sports headlines this noon, Louisville basketball star Kevin Ware is back in Kentucky and on the road to recovery. You can see from this video that the 20 year old is up and moving around with the help of crutches. Amazing that he's on his feet right now. The University of Louisville guard broke his right shin bone Sunday night during an NCAA tournament game against Duke, that big Elite Eight victory. The incident was seen live by millions of television viewers. Louisville athletic officials are optimistic that Ware will make a full recovery.
Turning now to news across the CSRA, Richmond County investigators need your help to find suspects involved in a shooting in the Harrisburg neighborhood. It's been more than a day now and still no arrests. Investigators are looking for two men who are believed to be traveling in a four-door gold-colored Acura sedan. If you have any information about this crime, please contact the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. A Columbia County woman is behind bars this noon after investigators say she falsely accused a deputy of rape. Kelsey Long is charged with making a false report of a crime. The deputies say they ran after Long and tackled her. She was brought to the hospital where Long claimed she had been raped by one of the deputies. Officials say Long is being held at the Columbia County Detention Center without bond. Well, Columbia County leaders vote for a new energy tax. The 2% energy excise tax on manufacturers will replace energy sales tax that the state eliminated last year. Uh, Georgia lawmakers push for this tax reform in an effort to attract more business to the state. But Columbia County leaders say they feel like the state gave away something that was rightfully theirs. Our Mike Miller has more. Tuesday night, Columbia County commissioners unanimously approved a new energy tax, which will boost revenue that the county lost when a new state law took effect last year. Uh, so for Columbia County, it was going to be about $250,000 lost. Uh, so once again, we've leveled the playing field now. And we won't realize that loss. The energy excise tax will not affect residents and local businesses here in Columbia County. It will only affect manufacturing companies. Before the tax reform, manufacturers paid a 6% sales tax on energy consumption. 2% went to the county and 4% went to the state. The state law gave the county an option to recoup their 2% should they choose to do that uh, based on an excise tax. So basically what this is, is this is recouping tax that the county was already getting and the manufacturer is still going to benefit because they're going to get the benefit of the 4% that the state has given up. Companies will be taxed on the energy they use, which includes gas, electricity, water and several other materials factories use to operate. Businesses like Georgia Ironworks and John Deere were opposed to this energy tax, but Columbia County Administrator Scott Johnson says they came around. And, and certainly they need any sort of benefit that they can get, and we support the industry in Columbia County. This is not a vote to say that, that we're not behind them. Johnson says the county is also trying to support its citizens. Really, the, the credit that we would have been given away uh, may, have, may have had to been recouped in property taxes. And we didn't feel like it was fair for the citizens of Columbia County to pay an additional property tax so a manufacturer could take a tax credit. And that was Mike Miller rec uh, reporting. In other news, Richmond County uh, commissioners uh, give the go-ahead for the city administrator to develop a plan to hire a recruiter to bring in new business, especially for areas of town like South Augusta. Fred Russell says the plan for the recruiter should be back before commissioners in a month. Also, commissioners voted not to restart the caddy cleanup program. Supporters made a last ditch effort. However, property owners who paid for caddy say the service isn't needed. And commissioners delay a discussion on changing the city ethics code. They will now discuss it at the next commission meeting in two weeks. In news across Georgia, former Atlanta School Superintendent Beverly Hall posted bond today and was released from the Fulton County Jail last night. Hall is accused in a standardized cheating scandal along with 34 subordinates who were indicted last Friday. A few of the educators had not turned themselves in by Tuesday's deadline. Students at Wilcox County High School in South Georgia share classrooms and sports fields, but they don't share the same prom. Now, one prom is for white students, the other for students of color. As Clinton Bourgeois reports, a group of seniors decided to cre create their own prom. We're embarrassed. It, 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 it's, it's really it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of embarrassing. Stephanie, Maricia, Quanisha, and Keila say they do everything together except prom night. We're all friends. That's just kind of not right that we can't go to prom together. In a world full of color, Wilcox County High School still see things as black and white. There's a white prom and then we have our integrated prom. If any race other than Caucasian tries to attend the white prom, they would probably have the police come out there and escort them off the premises. Yes. That was the case just last year as a biracial student was turned away by police. It's been that way for as long as anyone can remember and it doesn't stop at prom. Homecoming is also segregated. While still having two separate dances, the school decided to elect only one pair for king and queen for the first time this school year. 
Quanisha won. I feel like it, it had to be a change because for me to be a black person and for the king to be a white person, I felt like, you know, why can't we come together? But nothing changed. Quanisha wasn't invited to the white homecoming. In fact, the pair took separate pictures for the school yearbook. When people around here are set in their ways, they're not too adamant to change. So the girls are taking matters into their own hands. If we don't change it, no one else will. We do it Friday and Saturday. They're organizing a prom for everyone to attend, but everyone is not fond of the idea. We actually put up posters for the integrated prom. We had people ripping them down at the school. The group will continue to make progress even though there doesn't seem to be much motivation to change. We need to stick with the tradition. It's, you know, this is a traditional thing. We don't need to change and stuff like that. I'm like, but why? No one could answer my question. Exactly. So. And they think that nothing's broken, so why fix it? Now, the uh, senior class is raising money to pay for the integrated prom without the help of school officials. It will be held April 27th. Now, the students say the school offered a resolution to permit an integrated prom for all students to attend, but not stop segregated proms. And again, we turn to our Facebook friends for their thoughts and insight. We got many responses and here are just a few. Well, Stacy Richard writes, look, April Fools was Monday. Get with the program, Wilcox County. That should be illegal. And this from Ivy Hoyle. I had to reread this story to make sure I read it right and that this is 2013 and not 1965. And wow, let's talk about the extreme waste of resources by having the police enforce this horribly racist tradition. Joseph Shazinski says separate but equal was determined to be illegal and a violation of anyone's civil rights. Segregation being a tradition is not an excuse to keep it and anyone in favor of it truly needs to reevaluate who they are. Uh, this discussion is still going on uh, on our Facebook page so just head there right now by searching News Channel 6.